So this paper, uh, this research, uh, is part of my you know, bigger research agenda, which looks at how investors uh, and shareholders can hold uh, corporate directors, boards of directors, responsible for problems in their companies. So the company has gone through some crisis, some financial problem, some, um, you know, any, any kind of corporate crisis. Is the board being held accountable by shareholders? And this is an important question because there's a lot of concern that uh, there are all kinds of, you know, corporate problems. And the board of directors, which represents the shareholders uh, as, as sort of leaders of the company, do not take, do not, do not pay any price. Uh, there's no penalty. And if there is no any accountability, then you know, why will the boards do a good job? So given that there are so many you know, problems uh, in the last few years, have been, we've gone through a huge financial crisis, um, are, are the boards being held accountable? So the study it looks at um, a large number of uh, companies in the United States which, were, uh, which, were, which went through financial uh, fraud allegations. And uh, we look at two things. Shareholders have two ways of uh, looking at, of holding their directors accountable. One is that they can take them to the courts and file a lawsuit against, uh, against the company. Um, and so, so we examine whether the shareholders actually individually hold the directors responsible in these lawsuits. So, so do they file a lawsuit against the individual director uh, himself or herself and say that you, you were responsible for it, so you should be, uh, you should be paying a price. Um, so, so, so do they use the court system to hold the director accountable? So that's, that's one uh, method. The second method is do they uh, vote against these directors? So when the directors come up for re-election, do the shareholders express their unhappiness with the, with the board, with the directors, by voting against them in, the, uh, in these elections? And what are your findings? The finding is essentially that yes, they use both these uh, methods. But they don't use it enough. So, so first of all, there was uh, there is so far no evidence on on either of these things. Um, there's a lot of concern on part of the boards, uh, individual directors. So, whoever we talk to, there are a lot of surveys, and the directors are very afraid, <coughs> uh, especially in the United States, that they face a lot of uh, risk, that they can be sued in courts, that uh, they, you know they'll lose their jobs, and 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 so on and so forth. But this is fear. Uh, is there is there any reality? To this fear is, is the first uh, is the first point, and what we find is that uh, in roughly uh, so when a company faces a problem, roughly 10% of uh, independent directors. So we look only at independent directors on, on the boards. Uh, roughly about 10% of the independent directors are um, are sued in court. Now you can say that's a very small number. It's only 10%. The 90% of directors are not being held accountable, um, or you can say. 10%, if you're an individual director, the, you know, a lot of people I tell this number to say that the risk is too high. You know, I didn't realize that I have a 1 in 10 chance of being a party to a lawsuit when I go on to a company. Um, so it depends on the perspective you take, but the, the, but the number is, is 10% that your, your, your chances of getting in a lawsuit because of the company, because of sitting on the board is about 10%. So that's, that's one thing. <coughs> um, so then we find two other uh, uh, interesting findings. Shareholders uh, oppose directors who have been uh, in companies which, which face these problems. Shareholders oppose the directors who have been named in the lawsuits even more. So, so there is something about um, some directors, these 10% these of directors, that, um, that shareholders and the, uh, you know, the shareholders who are filing the lawsuit and the ones who are voting against them find that they have done you know, something wrong. Uh, so, so there is accountability uh, against. But the level of voting is fairly small. So the, the directors, on average, get only about 6% uh, negative um, or shareholder opposition to the extent of 6%. Now, again, is the 6% number really small? Uh, this is an average number. So there are definitely going to be you know, cases more than 6%, and there are going to be cases less than 6%. Um, in the United States, the, the general level of shareholder support is about 98%. So only, on average, only about 2% um, opposition votes are cast against directors. So compared to that, 6% is three times, uh, three times more. But it's still not a big enough, uh, you know, some might say that it's not a big enough number and shareholders are not uh, being too active. So what we have done is to actually measure these things. So that whenever we have a, a policy discussion, now you, now you have empirical evidence, now you have numbers 
uh, that, that you can discuss. You can talk about is 10% too low or too high. What is making it 10%? Are there you know, structural constraints? Uh, are there you know, constraints in the law that uh, prevent the investors who are suing the, the company from naming more directors? Why are investors um, you know, voting so little? It is for investors to take note. The large institutional investors very often go with uh, proxy advisors. There are advisory consulting companies which tell the investors which way to vote uh, because there are so many companies. There are 5,000 plus companies in the, in the United States um, and uh, elsewhere in the world as well. And every large mutual fund <coughs> um, will, will own shares in almost all these companies. It's very hard for the fund managers to decide on every case how they, how they should be voting. Uh, for every director, there are you know, about 10 directors in every company. It's a very hard problem for them to be doing this. And so we have specialized agents, specialized consulting companies, proxy advisors they are called. Um, and so we also look at how often do proxy advisors give a opposing recommendation against these directors. And we find that they do. Um, but <coughs> again, we have an est <coughs> our results uh, show that about 25% of the cases, they provide a negative recommendation against these directors. Now is 25% a large number or a small number? Uh, it's, it's up, what, I think what we are doing by this research is, is allowing a conversation between investors, proxy advisors, companies, uh, the Securities Exchange Commission uh, and, and others who can now intelligently, um, uh, intelligently discuss these issues because now, now they've been measured, now they've been, um, now, now, now they've, we know what the uh, outcomes are and we can decide, you know, the, the U.S., uh, you know, the governance people, the, the society can decide whether 10% is, is large enough. That's enough of a accountability uh, or the voting is, is, you know, big enough or the institutional investors, the large mutual funds and others can say this is, uh, this is too low. We are not holding them accountable enough because there is a free riding problem. Uh, every company has thousands of investors. Every investor can believe that the other investor is going to take action. But if everyone believes that the other person is going to do something, in the end, nobody does uh, anything. But now by, by seeing these numbers, it's clear that nobody is, uh, is doing much. Uh, some of the more uh, active institutional investors can take note and say that, you know, we need to think about these things much more, uh, much more. Uh, so I don't know if this is important. Uh, I don't believe regulation can solve the problems. You know, uh, in, in society, regulation has a role. But, uh, but better informed investors can understand their role better and engage in conversations with companies, with boards, with proxy advisors, and among themselves on how should we be thinking about our governance responsibilities much more. How should we be, how should we be holding uh, directors more accountable for their performance uh, if, they, if they feel that these numbers are too small? I personally feel these numbers are too small, um, that you know, the negative extent of voting should be more uh, against, against directors who have been you know, involved in problems. Uh, but, the, but the investors have to decide for themselves, you know, in each one. Um, the, the, the other option for investors is to just sell the shares in the company and go away. So partly you don't expect 80% you know, of investors to be voting against, uh, against the company and, and its directors because if you're that unhappy, you should not be holding shares at all. But then you have to hold some shares. You, know, you have to hold shares. You know, index funds don't have the option. They have to hold shares in a lot of companies. And therefore, the large institutional investors have to engage in understanding how, to hold, how, do, how should we be, we be holding corporate directors accountable. And uh, we are helping them through this research to, uh, to estimate that.